Hello and welcome to Ot and Math. In this edition of Ot and Math, we're going to talk about recursive rules. We're going to talk about recursive rules and compare them to explicit rules. So what is a recursive rule and what is an explicit rule? Well, we've been talking about explicit rules for the past couple of weeks. An explicit rule defines a value or some term in a sequence as a function related to that term's position in the sequence. So we recall we've got two uh, sequences and two rules. One is an arithmetic sequence and the other is a geometric sequence. And in those sequences we're providing explicit rules because we're providing the value of the term in relation to its position. So for example, if I wanted to find out what a sub 8 is for an arithmetic sequence, I would find out what a sub 1 is, then multiply 8 minus 1 or 7 times the common difference. If I wanted to figure out what a sub 8 was in a geometric sequence, it would be the first term in the sequence times the common or constant ratio to the 8 minus 1 or to the 7th. So I could find out what the value is of any term in the sequence based on its position. A recursive rule works a little bit differently. A recursive rule defines the value of a term by relating it to the preceding terms. All right, so that means in order to find a sub 8, you need to know a sub 7. In order to find a sub 7, you need to find out what a sub 6 is. Uh, if you want to find out what a sub 6 is, you need to know what a sub 5 is, and so on and so forth. So the rule for a recursive sequence, um, an arithmetic sequence, is going to be a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus d, the common difference. And for a geometric sequence, it's going to be a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 times the constant ratio. So let's think about an example. If I had a value of let's just say a sub 1, and I knew that the common difference was 5. So the a sub 1 is 1, and the common difference is 5. I could write a rule that says a sub 2 is equal to a sub n minus 1, the preceding term, plus the common difference of 5. So now I can figure out what a sub 2 is, because I know a sub 2 minus 1 is a sub 1. I know the preceding term's value. So this would be a sub 2 is equal to 1, the preceding term, plus 5, which would equal 6. In the same way, we can figure out what uh, the values are in geometric sequences for recursive sequences. If I know that a sub 1 is equal to 5, and my constant ratio is 2, I can then write a rule that says a sub 2 is equal to a sub n minus 1 times the common ratio of 2. So I know that a sub n minus 1 is a sub n. a sub 1 is 5. So I have 5 times a common ratio of 2. I get 10. Right? a sub 3 would then just be a sub 2, or 10, times the common ratio of 2. And I get 20. And I'd work this so on and so forth. As I uh, increase the number of terms, I continue to find out what those subsequent terms are. So to find out a term, you need to know it's prior value. <clears throat> and that's what a recursive rule is. The other thing we're going to talk about in this section is iterative functions. Now an iterative function involves a repeated composition of a function. So typically we'll start out with some value x sub 0. And that's not really the first iterate, that's just the first value. The first iterate you'll find will be x sub 1. And how do we find x sub 1? When you use the value of x sub 0 in the value of x in the first function. So for example, if I want to find x sub 1, I say, what's the function of x sub 0? As I place the value of x sub 0 into the function. So x sub 1 becomes negative 3 times x sub 0 plus 1. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus 1 is negative 5. Now I take that value of x sub 1, and I place it in the function to find out what x sub 2 is x sub 2 is the function of x sub 1. x sub 1 is negative 5. So I have negative 3 times negative 5, which is 15 plus 1. x sub 2 is 16. Now for x sub 3, 
I place x sub 2 into the function, f of x. So f of x2 is equal to negative 3 times 16 plus 1. x sub 3 is equal to negative 47. And you repeat this process, so on and so forth, until you find the desired x sub value.